Hello everyone. The topic for today is Semoptosis. This is an important topic. I will be covering it under three major sections. First, how do we define it and how do we differentiate it from a life-threatening variety of it that is Massive Hemoptosis. Secondly, I will be looking at the various etiologies for Hemoptosis. And lastly, we will look at the approach or the evaluation of a patient who presents to us with Hemoptosis. Let's get started. The first section is related to definition. Uh, hemoptosis is defined as the expectoration of blood from the respiratory tract. Thus, areas that are surrounding it can confuse uh, the origin of this bleeding. So, think of nasopharyngeal bleeding that is epistaxis or upper gastrointestinal bleed that is hematemesis. Uh, this should be ruled out whenever you are evaluating or suspecting hemoptysis. The general source for this bleeding is from the bronchial artery. Thus, it's a high pressure bleeding and thus it can be difficult to control. And uh, the site is generally from the medium sized airways or the bronchi. Massive hemoptysis is defined as a life threatening bleeding and this is uh, defined as 150 ml of blood uh, or more than that at once or greater than 400 ml that is expectorated in around 24 hours. Uh, death in these patients does not result from exsanguination that is hemorrhagic shock rather it results from respiratory failure because blood will coagulate and that will lead to airway obstruction. Thus treatment is uh, uh, should be definitive and should be uh, should be centered on protecting the non-bleeding lung and localizing the site of the bleeding and finally you will control the bleeding. These are the three major steps that you will take in this patient. So uh, first to protect the non-bleeding lung, a general measure like positioning the patient with the bleeding side down will help the gravitate the blood towards the bleeding lung itself and thus the non-bleeding lung can continue its function unhindered. Secondly, you can go with selective intubation of this non-bleeding lung or in the insertion of a double human endotracheal tube. Uh, Localizing the site of bleeding is easy. You can either go with a history and physical examination. A meticulous physical examination will definitely yield results, but uh, sometimes this remains obscure and thus you will uh, need chest x-ray and CT scans or bronchoscopy for uh, localizing this site. The control of bleeding is obtained by flexible bronchoscopy. Uh, remember, this approach is generally temporizing in nature. A definitive hemostatic control is not achieved in this particular method, whereas rigid bronchoscopy is definitive because you can go with pottery uh, using rigid bronchoscopy. You can also use angioembolization, that, but it has a very important complication that is anterior spinal artery embolization and surgery is generally of rust sort. Uh, now we will look at the second section that is the etiology behind hemoptysis. Uh, the most common cause worldwide and in India is tuberculosis, whereas most common cause in the West is acute bronchitis or bronchiectasis. Uh, whenever we discuss the etiologies of hemoptysis, think of three major conditions. First, infectious neoplastic and then vascular. In the infectious etiologies, you can go with bacterial, viral, uh, fungal or parasitic causes. Bacterial causes remain important uh, and one another additionally important cause is parasitic cause. Uh, paragonimiasis that is lung fluke infestation generally is seen in Southeast Asia and China and can occur due to raw crayfish ingestion. In bacterial causes, necrotizing pneumonia will encroach on the pulmonary vessels and um, this will rupture them and that will cause hemoptysis. Think of Staphylococcus aureus infection, Pseudomonas, oral anaerobes and Klebsiella pneumonia. Fungal infections like endemic fungi, nocardiosis and aspergillosis are next in this line and viral causes include influenza and parainfluenza virus and they remain the most common causes in the West. In the neoplastic etiologies, think of the central lesions like the bronchial carcinoids, the small cell lung carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. After that, the vascular etiologies, you should think of pulmonary embolism with infarction. This cause is rare. Whereas the more common cause include cardiogenic pulmonary edema, which presents with pink and frothy sputum. And think of diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, uh, which can occur due to pulmonary renal syndromes, that is ankyne associated vasculitis or good pasture syndrome, SLE. Or it can occur due to variety of drug exposures like antiplatelet or anticoagulant therapy and cocaine exposure. Imaging will generally reveal diffuse ground loss opacities uh, in this condition. Uh, another important cause can be pulmonary endometriosis, which is obviously to be suspected in a female. And uh, this is referred to as catamenial hemoptysis and uh, bleeding will occur in during towards the menstrual phase of the menstrual cycle. Then we have the evaluation of the patient. So the history and physical examination is centered on confirming what is the site of the bleeding and to quantify it. So whether it is massive or not and urgent treatment, is it necessary or not is the first step. 
towards the history you will then look for important risk factors like toxin exposures or smoking and age greater than 40 where you should think or suspect chronic bronchitis you should suspect malignancy in the patient then past history like for example pulmonary embolism can be suspected by past history of uh, of a thrombotic diathesis or a past episode of dvt uh, and if there is some malignancy, you can consider metastasis to the lung that will again erode the pulmonary arteries and cause hemoptysis. Evaluation in every patient must include a complete blood count along with a chest x-ray and a coagulation studies. It is written over here. After that, if you are suspecting a pulmonary renal syndrome due to the combined presentation of hematuria and hemoptysis, go with uh, renal function testing along with urinalysis and uh, obtaining the serum electrolytes. If you are suspecting an infectious etiology, cultures will be very important. Uh, and uh, the most common and most uh, available specimen that is uh, used is sputum. So go with sputum analysis, go with sputum cytology and uh, that will be very helpful. Advanced studies can be used in higher centers and this is to localize mass lesions to look for uh, interstitial lung disease to uh, confirm bronchiectasis. This includes CT scan. You can also go with bronchoscopy and CT angiography for pulmonary embolism. Uh, I hope you will read the book. This is a small chapter. Uh, that's all. Thank you.